Welcome back. What a wild housing market we have right now. So for example, the number of new listings just increased by the biggest year of year gain in about three years. Also, housing inventory is also rising, but meanwhile, asking prices of newly listed houses is relatively stagnant at 0% gain over the past 12 months. So a lot of interesting trends happening right now in our US housing market. And today's video is based on my own analysis of Realtor.com's latest data just announced uh, today at the time of filming this video, which is on Friday, March 22nd. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. I have a lot to share. Uh, this is uh, the uh, article posted by um, Realtor.com. Actually, it posted it uh, yesterday on Thursday. Anyways, just like my previous videos, I did not even read it. Instead, go to Realtor.com slash research slash data. Click on this link right there, and it takes you to this information. So let's get nerdy here. Let's talk about asking prices. Asking prices were flat compared to 12 months ago. This is when you list your home for sale, your listing, listing price or your asking price. It is flat on a year-over-year -year basis. Much different compared to, uh, when was this? The decreases we saw in June of 2023 and also the double-digit gains we saw in 2022. Very big changes. Also, as I note right there, in the previous week, asking prices were down by 0.6%. That was the first time prices were negative on a year-over-year -year basis since July 2023. Um, asking price growth has been relatively stagnant for quite some time now, and this is due to rising inventory, more price reductions by home sellers, and obviously 7% mortgage rates as well. In addition, perhaps there's more buyers that are on the sidelines waiting for prices and or uh, rates to decrease before they um, enter into the market as well, which may be one of the contributing factors why asking prices have been relatively um, flat uh, from one year ago. Now, speaking of um, inventory levels, um, a very big change here because last week, inventory levels rose by 23.8% from the same week of 2023. That was the biggest year-over-year -year increase since May of 2023. There's actually been more houses for sale this year compared to last year for 19 consecutive weeks. In other words, this means there's more options for home buyers out there overall nationwide. Looking at averages, of course, real estate is local, uh, but overall, this is a positive sign if you're looking to buy a house because there's more houses for sale which of course makes it there's more options and therefore that limits price growth and of course limits competition as well. In my personal opinion, uh, inventory has been on the rise as of late due to two main reasons. A huge increase or I should say a significant rise in the number of newly listed houses for sale and on top of that decreasing demand. So when looking at uh, data from Redfin, for example, they posted um, uh, yesterday that pending home sales were down on a year-over-year -year basis, yet new listings were up by double digits. So supply outpacing demand right now. This is all contributing to the rise of housing inventory. Let's also have a look at my own analysis of Altos research data as well regarding housing inventory. Because one year ago at this time, there was around 415,000 homes for sale. Now there's around 507,000. So an increase of about 92,000 more homes for sale from one year ago, and that represents a 22% rise on a year-over-year -year basis. Let's take a look at this as well, because let's have a look at the year-to-date growth uh, in the amount of houses for sale or housing inventory compared to the same time frame in 2023. So there's slightly more houses for sale right now compared to the start this year. Uh, that represents a, only a 2% increase in the amount of houses for sale year to date. When looking at the same time frame in 2023, that was the start of 2023 through mid-March last year, uh, inventory actually decreased by 12%. So the big picture here, or in other words, uh, supply was falling um, from January through mid-March last year, whereas this year we're seeing a small gain of 2%. Let's have a look at altosresearch.com's website regarding this. 
So to start the year in 2023, around 472,000 homes for sale. Inventory decreased until we hit uh, mid-April last year. But by the time we hit this time last year, uh, mid-March, uh, um, we're at 414,000, just under 415,000. So inventory was decreasing last year, whereas this year, inventory is barely squeaking out again, has been more or less flat all year. But more recently, uh, increasing slightly because last week we we're at around 500,000 homes for sale. Now it's at 507,000. Also comparing the past several years, at 507,000, way above 2022, 2021, but below 2020, as well as 2019. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the main reasons why inventory levels or the amount of houses for sale nationwide is up from 12 months ago is due to a significant increase in the amount of people who are deciding to list their houses for sale. That rose by nearly 18% last week. In fact, it increased by 17.8%. That was the biggest increase since May of 2021. The biggest year-over-year -year increase in about three years. Absolutely crazy. It's also higher than the same time frame last year for 21 consecutive weeks as well. Um, something to keep in mind though, is that even though the number of newly listed houses for sale is uh, rising by double digits for um, over one month now, there's still around 20% fewer compared to pre-COVID levels. So the amount of new listings, even though it's up by 18% uh, year over year, we're still down compared to what is normal uh, looking at pre-pandemic levels. All right, let's change gears uh, slightly here and talk about days in the market. Uh, this is a time frame when a homeowner lists their home for sale until they accept an offer from a home buyer. It's not recorded though until the house is actually um, uh, closed or the sale is finalized. Uh, therefore, this is a lagging indication of a U.S. housing market. In any case, um, it, last week, it took two days faster to sell a house compared to uh, the same time frame in 2023. So houses are selling faster for the past 24 weeks in a row. Uh, before that, we had 58 consecutive weeks in which houses were taking longer to sell compared to the previous year. Uh, let's also talk about the increase in the number of reduced price listings. So the number of reduced price listings increased by 36.1% on a year-over-year -year basis. This marks the eighth consecutive week of year-over-year -year gains. It has been accelerating each week as well. And that's right here. So for example, in uh, January 27th, we're only at 5.8%, but uh, every single week after, uh, the number of reduced price listings has been increasing. Also, this gain of 36% is the biggest year-over-year -year increase since April of 2023. Pretty significant, um, but it's not as big as the triple-digit gains we saw in November of 2022 through March last year. We saw gains over 100%. Now we're seeing gains at 36.1%. Now you may be asking yourself, why are we seeing a rise in the number of reduced price listings? And that is due to two main factors in my opinion. Number one, housing inventory rising. In other words, when inventory increases, there's more options for home buyers and therefore more competition amongst home sellers. And therefore we're seeing more price reductions. On top of that, home buyers are still sitting on the sidelines overall, uh, or I should say a significant amount of home buyers are sitting on the sidelines due to high rates as well. All right, that was the uh, lot info to go over in today's video. So just like my previous videos, here's a summary for you guys. And also I included some um, details regarding rates and also other things that have been happening with our US housing market as of late as well. So number one, Asking prices in the U.S., um, again, real estate is local, but today's video is about national trends. Anyways, asking prices are flat, um, but the previous week, in the previous week, it was down on a year-over-year -year basis. The last time that happened was way back in July of 2023. Also, asking prices have been relatively stagnant for about one month now, and this is from an increase of housing inventory or supply, uh, more price reductions, and 
7% mortgage rates as well. Number two, housing inventory increased by 24% last week. That was the biggest year-over-year -year increase since May of 2023. Uh, this is likely due to a from lackluster home buying demand and a significant rise in the number of newly listed houses for sale. But even though the number of new listings posted the biggest year-over-year -year increase since May of 2021, nearly a three-year high, there's still around 39% fewer houses for sale compared to the same time frame in 2019. However, as I note right there, the gap between um, inventory levels right now compared to 2019 is actually getting more narrow. About a month ago, the gap was actually over 40%. Now it's at 39%. Number three, average 30-year fixed mortgage rates have decreased by about one percentage point ever since October uh, 2023. That means that buyers have approximately an increase in their purchasing power um, up by 10%. But when accounting for the fact that home prices have been on the rise ever since October of 2023, um, one would say that um, buyer's purchasing power is actually worse today than it is back in October of 2023. Also, because around 89% of homeowners who have a mortgage on their house um, have an interest rate below 6%, uh, that was based on uh, a fairly new uh, report from Redfin that was based on third quarter 2023's data that has been limiting the amount of people listing their houses for sale and thus keeping housing inventory well below 2019's levels. We do not need inventory to rise to pre-COVID levels though in order to see home prices decrease. That's exactly what happened in 2022 we saw inventory increase, but not getting in close, not, not getting close at all to 2018 and, and 19's levels. But despite that, home prices decreased though because inventory doubled in less than six months. Also, number four, the share of price reductions is flat uh, from this time last year, but it's much higher compared to the past several years. Uh, number five, houses were selling faster or have been selling faster for the past 24 consecutive weeks. Again, though, that's a lagging indication of our U.S. housing market. So what are some potential huge changes ahead? And of course, I am not a real estate market fortune teller. Number one, average 30-year uh, fixed rates have decreased by about one percentage point ever since October uh, last year. That means we have approximately a 10% increase in buyer's purchasing power. But again, when accounting for the fact that prices have been increasing since October, um, one could argue that um, buyer's purchasing power is worse than it was back then because housing affordability is still very, very low and a big issue. Number three, early signs of home buying demand have been absolutely all over the place and very volatile to say the least uh, due to all the changes happening in our housing market. The most recent trends um, regarding the amount of people who are submitting loan applications to buy houses uh, that's from the MBA for the week ended uh, March 15th. Uh, they reported on Wednesday, just a couple of days ago, that the amount of applications decreased by 14% on a year-over-year -year basis. In the previous week, it was down by 11%. So the year-over-year -year changes getting worse, uh, which is implying that potentially home seller sales uh, could falter in the coming months if we continue to see a lack of people submitting loan applications an early indication of home buying demand. Also, uh, NAR, or the National Association of Realtors, reported that pending home sales in January uh, decreased by 9% from January uh, 2023. Compare that to um, new home sales for new home construction, that actually increased by 2% on a year-over-year -year basis during that same time frame. So a dichotomy in our housing market where sales of new home, const new home construction have been holding up uh, relatively well uh, compared to uh, the resale market of existing houses. And by the way, I know it's uh, mid-April, I'm talking about January, January data, but uh, NAR will not report pending home sales for about another week, um, and they'll report uh, February's numbers. So if, uh, once they report that, of course, I'll update this um, uh, narrative here. Of course, real estate is local, like I mentioned. Number four, the direction of our U.S. housing market, in my opinion, will depend on the balance between supply and demand, 
unemployment, inventory levels, and mortgage rates as well. Number five, absolutely the most important one. I appreciate you guys uh, watching my video uh, today and all my videos as well. If you guys are already subscribed, I appreciate you. Also, if you guys are not subscribed and you wanna learn about the latest house market data in an unbiased manner here, uh, then I invite you to subscribe to this channel right now. And of course, if you guys got any value in this video whatsoever, then please hit like button. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.